morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to our service this this Sunday. And we, we give God thanks that you are able to be here with us, and of course in person, or for those joining us online. And so let's pray uh, before Pauline, who is going to lead the first part of our service. Lord Jesus, as we come in this time, in this space, we ask, Lord, that you quiet our hearts. May we experience your peace during this time of worship. Oh God, we ask that all the distractions of our lives, the distractions of the world, will be shut out so that all our focus, all of our undivided attention will be on you. And so Lord, be with us at this time in our worship, in our praise, in our adoration of your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
mind reflection, we present our confessions to the Lord. God loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. In silence, let us confess our personal sins to the Lord. together confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through diligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We are
Good morning, everyone. Uh, first reading comes from 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I will always thank my God for you because of his grace given, uh, given you in Jesus Christ. For him, you have been enriched in every way, as a speech and with all knowledge. God has confirmed our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait. Our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
Gospel is from Luke 11, verses 1 to 30. Hear the Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. <clears throat> But uh, please take a seat, my children, are going to go before they go. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for our children, our young people that you have entrusted to our care. We pray for them now that as they go, uh, you will be with them and open their minds and hearts to hear your word. We pray for their teachers that you will give them grace to impart your truth to their minds and hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. So this morning I want um, to focus 
your attention on prayer, the prayer, the discipline of prayer. Um, during Lent, we try to we try to center our attention and our study on the various <coughs> disciplines of the Christian faith. Disciplines are ways in which we draw nearer and nearer in our relationship with God. They are means of grace that God has provided for us to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with Him. Now, they are called disciplines because they, they require discipline. They, um, they take time. They take effort, maybe even sacrifice. <clears throat> and prayer is one of those main disciplines. We, um, Catherine shared with us last week on fasting. Fasting is another discipline. And during Lent, we look at various disciplines of the Christian faith fasting, prayer, and among others. And we'll talk about others as we go along. Um, without prayer, of course, the believer is powerless and fruitless. Um, in ourselves, we are weak. In ourselves, we are failures. And we need prayer. In fact, prayer, through prayer, through prayer, Jesus said we can conquer mountains. But without prayer, we are lost, sisters and brothers. We are lost in the sea of this world and we don't have any navigation. Um, we don't, you know, we don't have a sat nav to guide us. We used to say maps, but now we say sat nav because people are using maps, you know. <laughs> so, so, without prayer, we are lost and we are heading in the wrong direction. The gospel reading, I want to focus on. I mean, strangely, you know, I'm, I'm looking at both readings this morning, but I mean, just to, I, I'll be all over the scriptures, not, 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 I'm not staying in these readings, but let's start there, the gospel reading, in the gospel reading that Jennifer just read for us, the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And that is my focus this morning. Uh, it is a prayer that we need to pray. In fact, I think it's, it should be the first prayer. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Um, there's a prayer that I pray often, and it goes like this. Um, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's from a thing of one, of one of the saints of history. It goes like this. Lord, teach us to pray. Not merely to say our prayers, but truly to pray. Others, dear Lord, may give us the words to say, but only you can lead us to pray. It's a good prayer for you. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, prayer, of course, is a vast subject, and when we talk about we are merely wading in the shallow end of the of the of the stream of the ocean. We are we are just stepping our our toes in in the shallow bits. Because in fact, I could talk about prayer every day and not exhaust the the, 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 the topic of prayer. It's a vast subject. But of course the danger for us is that we talk about prayer a lot and not pray. It's easy to talk about prayer. It's not easy to pray. Hence, Lord, teach me to pray. Um, prayer does not come easy. And uh, anybody who thinks that don't understand <laughs> prayer. This is you know, this is one of the reasons why, and I mean, this week we're going on a retreat, and I want to, I want to give a preview of that in my talk. 
as one. It is retreats are about prayer. Um, I believe retreats, going on retreat, retreating from the, the cares and concerns of the world is a time to spend in prayer. I believe every Christian should go on a retreat at least once a year. You don't just talk about prayer, you pray. I, I mean, I have been doing retreats ever since I was in my 20s, uh, and I find them valuable in developing my own prayer life, my own spiritual life. And I, I commend it to all of you, frankly. Um, it's a great experience to do this. Um, and, and, and my prayer this week is for those who are who are coming on the retreat on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. My prayer is that we will all have an encounter with God in a much deeper way than we ever have done before. Because that's what retreats are there for. They are meant to give us a deeper encounter with God. So what is prayer? I think you could say the simplest um, definition for prayer is that it is communication with God. Prayer is the spiritual tool that we use to communicate with the spiritual and the eternal God, our Father. Prayer is not merely talking to God, it is communication with God. In other words, it is a two-way dialogue, a conversation. We speak to God in prayer, and God speaks to us also through prayer, and of course in His Word, which is why the Word of God and prayer tend to go together. Uh, meditation, reading the Scriptures, and prayer are two sides of the same coin. And that's why Bible study is important, because Bible study leads to prayer. Uh, the more you study the Scriptures, the more Pray, the more you pray, the more you want to study the scriptures. They are they are mirror of each other. Now, of course, prayer is based on relationship. It's based on the relationship between God as our Father and we as His children. Prayer is the child going to her father and seeking His favor. Prayer only works on the basis of a childlike. Faith. We, we never, we never become so self-sufficient that we do not need to pray. There is never a point in our life or even in our day when we say, I got this, God. You can chill. You can rest, God. I, I can deal with this. Never. Now, we may never say that, but we have that. You see, we approach God in prayer as a helpless, vulnerable little child in need of help. That is how Jesus taught us to come to God. For some people, prayer is okay when, when my back is against the wall and I have nowhere else to go but to God. So then, yeah, I pray then. Prayer becomes a stopgap. Something to be used to get out of trouble, to, to get out of the mind, to get a job, to get healing, whatever. But it's no more than that. Now when all is going well in your life, prayer is non-existent. Now if that's how you pray, then you're not praying. You're merely using God to get what you want. But that's not a relationship. Anybody who's been Anyone who's been in a relationship know that if you just use the other person in the relationship to get what you want, you're not in the relationship, you're in a, something else, which is not exactly the kind of relationship you want to be in. And, and of course, we do the same with God. We use Him to get what we want. The thing is, God is gracious and He does answer us despite our sin. Prayers is the one on earth. Presupposes a relationship. But specifically a father-child relationship, not 
not an employer or an employee relationship. Now, you know, we don't get in prayer, we don't treat God like our boss. Now, he is that, to be sure. God is a boss. God is our creator, he's our king and so forth. But when we approach him in prayer, we are to do so as a child approaches a father, not as an employee approaching your employer. These are very different approaches. So, prayer is simple. It is communication with God. But while it is simple, it is complex. It is complex because, let's face it, it is communication with God. Now, if you think about it, sisters and brothers, every relationship is complex. Every relationship is complex. I mean, anybody who's married, don't you? <laughs> it's simple, but it's complex. Even a friendship is complex. Now, if, if relationship is complex on human level, imagine the kind of relationship we have with the Almighty Creator of the universe. And so, so on the one level, yes, it is simple. Just pray. You know, somebody once said to Mother Teresa, can you tell me how to pray? And she said, well, just pray. <laughs> just pray. Um, yeah. But it's more complex than that, isn't it? Because relationships are much more complex than just what we see on the surface. Prayer can take many forms. There is petition, petition prayer, or sometimes intercessory prayer, where we pray for the needs of ourselves and we pray for others. Now this tends to be the most often prayer that Christians pray. Petition. Primarily for their own needs, asking God for stuff. 99% of our prayers, and I dare you to contribute to this. 99% of our prayers is about ourselves. It's about what we need. It's about our own life, and maybe even our own family. And I think you you know, this is about even praying is self centered. <laughs> even in our prayers, we are self centered. This shows that even in our prayers, the sinfulness of our hearts can't. The self is still there. No, there's nothing wrong with praying for ourselves. But if that's all you pray about, something is wrong. Now, intercession is a little different because intercession is praying for others. And we don't do this as much as we pray for ourselves. Now, as I said, nothing is wrong with praying for ourselves. But if that's all we do, if we spend most of our time just on our own selves, then we are self-centered in our prayers. How much do you pray for, the, for others? How much do you pray for the world, for the church? How much of your prayer time is spent not focusing on me, but focusing on the world and the conditions and situations in our world, the, the government? Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that we are to pray for those in authority so that we live peaceful lives. How much do you pray for the leaders of the country, the leaders of the government, those in authority? We are, we are more likely to complain and bicker about the kind of leaders we have, about the caliber of leaders we have. I do that. You know? Well, there are leaders that don't make them as they used to. And I will make her company. But how much do we pray for them? Because let's face it, they are leaders. Whether we like them or not. How much do we ask for God's wisdom for them to lead them in righteousness and godliness and justice and so on? And also, we are called to pray for the church and for the people of God. In fact, sisters and brothers, when you study, the New Testament. All, I said, all of Paul's prayers are for the church. All of them. They're for individual people in the church, or they're for the church in general. All of them. If we pray,
for the church. Sisters and brothers, I believe things will be different. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul tells us that he's praying for the Corinthian Christians. And I just want to pull out something he says in verse 4. He says this, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. And then verse 8, he will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stop there. Paul is convinced that despite the problems in the Corinthian church, and when you read the Corinthian letter, there are lots of problems in that church. But Paul is convinced that despite those problems, because he is praying for them, he knows that God will keep them firm in the faith to the very end. That they will be blameless on the day that the Lord returns. Now, let's understand, they're not blameless now, but I'm going to pray for you <laughs> that on that day, you will be blameless. Another prayer that Paul prays, and I want to I'm looking at a little bit of Paul's prayers this morning. It's not on your sheet, but you know it because I looked at it last year when we were looking at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, Paul says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power, through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all God's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Let's stop there. The prayer continues. When was the last time you prayed like this? For the church. Again, just as with secular leaders and those in authority, we are more prone, sisters and brothers, to complain about the church and the direction the church is going than to pray. Do we pray for our bishops? Do we pray for a sinner? Do we pray for the ministers of God's people? And do we pray, as Paul just prayed, for the Lord's people, all God's people? That's you and everyone. So do we pray for them? So another type of prayer, I, 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 I'm, I'm getting through this now. Another type of prayer is thanksgiving. And now, if, okay, so if our intercessory prayer is less than our petitionary prayer, our thanksgiving prayers in the next time. Okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving prayer are the prayers that shows our gratitude to God for what He's done for us in Christ. And what He's doing now and what He will do in eternity. We have the riches of God in Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins, He rose again, and through Him we have eternal life. So we have everything. And frankly, if we never get anything else from God, we have that. That is, we have salvation in Jesus Christ. And so, the very fact that I have breath is enough to be thankful. And so thanksgiving prayer is expressed in our worship. The more we worship, the more we are drawn into giving thanks and praise and adoration to God. Now, some theologians distinguish, distinguish between three broad types of prayer. This is what we're going to continue. First, there is vocal prayer. These are prayers that we vocalize. Words. Most of our prayers, again, 
if I should make a guess, 99% of our prayers, our prayers that we speak, words that we say, vocal prayers. But then there is also meditative prayer, where we do not vocalize the words, but use our minds to pray. In meditative prayer, one writer says, the lips are quiet, but the mind is active, picturing, pondering, reflecting, thinking about God. The mind is active in prayer, but no words are spoken. That's another aspect of our prayer, meditation. When we mull over the word of God in our hearts and our minds. There is another type of prayer, and may I say, this type of prayer is hardly ever done by most of us. It is called contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer. And this, this is a kind of prayer that we tend to do on retreats. In fact, we're going to do it on retreat this week. It is, it is, of course, we, you can do it anywhere at any time, but it's when we, we do not use any words at all. Both the lips and the mind remain quiet and silent before God. We simply enter into the presence of God and we get lost in His presence and lost for us. When was the last time you do contemplative prayer? Contemplative prayer is being so enveloped into the glory cloud of the presence of God and simply enjoying His presence that you have nothing to say. You just be silent. You're simply gazing at the Lord while the heart reaches out without words. The will seeks to be one with the will of God. And Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. This is contemplative prayer. To dwell, just to dwell in the presence of the Lord. To seek His face, to gaze on His beauty. Now, in this space of prayer, there are no words. We are silent. Sometimes we just need to be quiet and just be in the presence of God. So one theologian says, contemplation is the awareness of God known and loved at the core of one's being. When Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, he was transfigured. His, his physical shape was transformed into the glory of God. And he shone like the sun. And Moses and Elijah appeared. And Peter, James, and John saw this. And Mark Mark's Gospel tells us that they did not know what to say, so Peter spoke, <laughs> and God silenced him. You see, in that space, you don't know what to say, just don't say anything. But Peter had to say something, because that's who Peter is. And God quiet Peter and say, just stop. Just be. Just be in this place. Gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Enjoy this space. Don't speak. You see, most of our prayers never get to this contemplative stage because this is mature prayer. This is prayer without words. This Sisters and brothers, if, if most of us, if we are silent for too long, we fall asleep. Because we don't, we, it's not something we practice. That's why these things are called discipline. They're called discipline. Um, uh, uh, one of the saints of the church, a fellow named Saint Seraphim, he said this, When we remain in silence, our enemy the devil 
will have no success with regard to our hidden heart. Because he doesn't know what's there. Because the devil can't read your heart. When you start speaking, he can use your words against you. When we understand the complexity of prayer, maybe the first prayer that we should pray is, Lord, teach me to pray. And instead of just reciting a prayer, like, like we do when we recite the prayer that Jesus taught us, let us pray the prayer. Prayer is more than just saying words. It is making those words your own, using the words on the page to express your heart, your desire. To God. And finally, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, his disciples fell asleep instead of praying. Jesus said, Pray with me, and they fell asleep. And when Jesus came back, he didn't say, How dare you fall asleep on me? No. Sometimes, yes, we can fall asleep. And Jesus said, the reason you fall asleep is because you're weak. You're weak. He says, you know, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. But we need to get to that place in our spiritual life where we don't fall asleep. Where we discipline ourselves to pray. Whether vocalized, meditative, or contemplative. But all of them and may I just say, all of them take discipline. That's why it's called discipline. Psalm 62. On God alone my soul in stillness waits. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul, for in Him is my hope. Another great psalm. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. That is prayer. Prayer is a longing for God. The more we pray, the more we thirst and hunger for God. The more we are filled with God, the more of God we need, we desire. The more of God we have, the more of God we need. And so in our relationship with God, there is never a moment when we can say, I have had enough of God. I am full now of God. I don't need Him anymore. The, the more of God we have is the more of God we desire. And sisters and brothers, prayer is the hunger and thirsting for God, for more and more of God. So let us pray, let us keep praying, let us keep seeking, let us keep knocking, let us keep asking. Let us say, Lord, teach me to pray. Because most of us are barely scratching the surface. Let's pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Not merely to say our prayers, but truly to pray. Others, dear Lord, may give us the words to say, but only you can lead us to pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. So we're going to sing one of the great songs of prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs together. And bring it all to God in prayer. Let's sing.
come as children of the great God and Father. And so as we are standing, let us declare our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from an eye. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take a seat, we will be there in our intercessions. transformed into a peace and reconciliation. Dear Lord, we pray for Europe, we pray for our own country, the United Kingdom. We pray for Northern Ireland. We pray, Lord, that power sharing will be restored in Northern Ireland. And Lord, we pray that we would go forward with the European Union in harmony and joint prosperity and cooperation. We pray for wisdom and honesty, probity amongst all the political parties in our country. We pray, Lord, for the parts of the world where our brothers and sisters are persecuted for their faith. Pray for North Korea, for Yemen, Nigeria, and Pakistan. We pray for parts of the world where people starve because they don't have enough food. We pray for Somalia, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, and Yemen. And we pray, Lord, for those recovering from natural disasters. We think of those in Turkey was destroyed by earthquakes and have lost their homes. Be with them and help them to rebuild their country. We pray for our own country. We pray for wise governance and sound financial management for the whole population. We pray for those struggling with bills inflation and the cost of energy and high mortgage rates. We pray for King Charles or as he approaches his coronation. We pray for wise and humane immigration. 
racial policy that would dominate this crossing the channel in race yeah. that would treat people well in a way that would be pleasing on your side. We pray for those who strike for doctors, nurses, train drivers. We pray for a wise agreement to reach for that we can run our country well and fair in a way that um, values everyone with their skills and abilities. Meets the needs of the whole population. And dear Lord, we pray for our borough of Rue and for our capital city, London. We pray for Sadiq Khan and Rosanne and Fiaz as they consider how to support immigrants in Europe and how to bring our borough well, our capital city well. We pray for the sick. We pray for those suffering from cancer in our own congregation. Bless and heal them. We pray for those suffering with their mental health. Give them confidence. Lord. We pray for those who struggle with painful arthritis or physical affliction. <coughs> Heal their physical infirmities. We pray for those suffering from family breakdown. Lord, restore relationships. Bring people together. Help them to love you and to love each other. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. People in Ukraine, people in Turkey. People in our own congregation, Lord, we bless. And dear Lord, we pray for our own church and saviors. Bless Cornelius and Hilary, Jeanetta and Atley, Captain Milan and their families as their leaders. But bless every member of our family here for Christmas. We pray for the retreat of pleasure. That we would all draw closer to you through that, those of us who are there. And that we would serve you better, that we would return spiritually refreshed for the challenges we face. So Lord, we bring our prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, John. All right, let's stand and we're going to share the peace with God. God has done it all. He sent Christ to make peace between himself and us. And he has given us the work of making peace between himself and others. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another sign of God's peace. So, peace to you all.
here the offering, do put it in the offering plate, and we are going to just let's let's sing uh, that song again. Um, the prayer song that we just said. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus.
And so our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to call God Father. And so in faith and trust, we join our voices and our hearts and we say it together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. John, here with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that. Jesus died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Amen. And so, of course, all, all believers, all those who love the Lord Jesus, you are invited to come and partake of the food that he has provided for our nourishment, for our sustenance in this world. If you prefer not to partake of the body and blood of the Lord, you can still come forward, just keep your hands at your side, and I will offer the blessing of the Lord for you instead. We continue to make you on this side of the way. And um, uh, the first song is going to be played is either by Nathaniel. And so, so do sing along and do the every time.
And so we pray that and we remember those that are on our hearts and we've been praying for this week at the, the table of the mercy of God. We continue to remember those on our prayer list. We continue to remember our sister Veronica and Chester, who are not doing very well. Our sister Joanna and Jean Murphy. Um, she hasn't been well today and uh, she called me to say that she's praying for our retreat. So I, I know that Jean's prayers are very much. So we thank God for that and we continue to pray for her um, at home. Remember, Sister Pauline and her mom Daphne, we continue to pray for Pauline. And Muriel, our brother David, here this morning. Our sister Surya is also here. Our brother, sister Dolly and our brother Desmond are also, also with us this morning. We give God thanks and we continue to pray for them as well. We pray for our sister Comfort who lost her sister this past week. So we, we pray that God will comfort you and strengthen you in your time of loss and grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, Come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer of thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and hearts to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Right, before, we, before we go this morning and uh, this afternoon, we want to draw your attention to a few notices. Okay, so a few notices. Um, one notice is to two, well, two notices. One is, of course, we have a retreat this week, and um, do pray for us. I mentioned our sister Jean, who is praying for us, and um, so I would, we would love your prayers, those of us who are going. Those of us who are going, and you need to see you for just under five minutes afterward, just to finalize things with you uh, before before Wednesday. Um, and, and, and of course, Grace uh, is meeting with the women afterwards. So, we, uh, so I'm not going to keep you long uh, for those women who need to go to the women's meeting. So just a few minutes afterwards, all those who are going on the retreat, just to finalize things and put things into place before we, before Wednesday and before we leave. Um, uh, okay, so. Let's this would have been some, some visitors. We have some visitors this morning and we want to acknowledge our visitors. Pearl, I got your um, I mean you're not a visitor anymore, but uh, <laughs> as I said, after two or three visits you are regular, yes? <laughs> okay, so, so good to see you, Pearl. Uh, uh, welcome. And I think you're on our retreat, you're on the retreat this week, so yay, so it's great. Great that uh, you're, you're coming. Um, I have a family, um, um, Farouk, Fozia, Ferry, and Angel. Uh, do stand, let's welcome you. <laughs> welcome, welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Do, don't rush off. Do say hello to us before you go. All right? Thank you. Um, I don't see any other visitors. And, uh, well, it's great to have Donnie and Desmond. Yes. Uh, all the way from I know they take like, like three buses to get here, 
So, so it's great to have you guys come down this morning. Great to see you. Um, any others? No, I think, I think that's it for the visitors. All right. Um, birthdays, any birthdays this week? I know um, uh, Ambrose, have, Ambrose and Glennis have birthday um, this coming week, yes. I think Glennis is on Friday, get it right? And Ambrose is on Saturday. Husband and wife having their birthday back to back. Now, what's the odds of that? Thank like God somehow put it right into place, you know? <laughs> um, sorry, uh, uh, Georgie, let's see your hand. Who? Oh, it's tall. Happy birthday to her as well. So give us, give her our best wishes, okay? Um, okay, so Glenn is coming in. She's like, why are you calling me? Uh, okay, so I'm Rose and Glenn. This is Friday and Saturday. Any others? Yes, me. On the phone on my birthday on Friday. Your birthday as well? The 3rd of March. Oh, it was, yes, it was, it was oh, okay, so two days ago. It was yours, yeah. That's right, we want to see our birthday to you as well, darling. Huh? Yours was on the 1st. I said David's day, so there you go. Uh, so, darling was on the 1st. Who else? That's... Anne Watson. Anne! Anne? When is your birthday? Tomorrow! So, you see? Jonathan has it down. You see? So, and I know if Melissa was here, she would have told us. So, I mean, you know, I do. You know, I do. Alright, so, if that's it, we're going to sing happy birthday to all these. Alright? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
I won't be doing morning prayer from Wednesday evening because um, I'll be at the retreat. Um, so as I said, do keep us in prayer for that as well. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all you love today, this week, and for all eternity. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.